Hi everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of the Liton Report. I'm Arvin Gonzalez and in this episode number 17 we're going to talk about what was happening in the Dominican Winter League in the last week. And a lot of things happened. Uh, first, uh, Escogido fired his uh, fired their manager, Pedro Lopez. Escogido, who is actually in the last play of, of the standings. Um, the team is being basically a mess, especially uh, with their offensive and also uh, with the relief, with the relievers and the name Felipe Rojas Jr., who is uh, son of Felipe Alou, uh, the interim manager, and also they have Dave Jaws the bench coach that was in part, uh, basically the move that they made, Escogito made in, the, in their coaching staff and it's the third manager that has been fired in the tournament first it was uh, and it's actually the second manager first was the Toros fired uh, Pat Listash and yeah that's something in the something that usually happens in Dominican Winter League and then they used to fire managers in the first 10 20 games which is basically the 20 40 percent respectively of the regular season and after that, nothing has changed with Escogido. They keep playing bad, but uh, first, let's take a look of what happened yesterday, Sunday, in Lidom. First, let's talk about Aguilas and Lisey, who were playing in Estadio Quisqueya in Santo Domingo, the house of uh, Tigres del Licey. And Licey won that game a seat. In that game, Rodney Mauricio had three RBIs, he hit a single and a double, also Sergio Alcantara went three for four, winning a double, one RBI and three runs scored, and also Pablo Reyes, who made his debut this past week with Lisey, got a couple of hits in four at-bats, one of them was a triple and two RBIs and also in that game we're playing another uh, guys who made their debut with the team in the last week I'm talking about Mel Rojas Jr. also who is still looking to get his first hit he went 0 for 4 uh, yesterday in his beam 0 for 10 to begin the the, the season with Lisey in his first three games. Also another uh, man who uh, made his debut with Lisey last week was Taylor Corway. Corway who plays for for the Padres and had a really good season in in the minors in AAA in El Paso for San Diego. He was playing. He was playing who he second game yesterday against uh, Aguilas and he went one for four with one run a score and again a fantastic start by Steve Moyers the foreign pitcher by Lisey five in his pitch five hits one run one walk and two strikeouts he has a 0 0.93 ERA that uh, basically is in top of the league uh, right now um, it's been part of the keys for let's say success this season not only the really good start offensively that they had but also having a couple of guys that are in the starting pitcher pitching staff that is a, that are able to not only 
a, a bow a brush amount of innings but also uh, to do it nicely and um, Moyers is leading the league with that 0.93 ERA and second place is another starting pitcher for Lisey Smith Rogers and in the fifth place is Cesar Valdez so three or the five best ERA in Lidon uh, are for Lisey starting pitchers and also in the other hand for the losers this time Aglas um, another nice game for Johan Camargo who was named the player of the week in Lidon in the f- offensive part today he or yesterday he was 2 for 4 with a double and run and 3 RBIs he's hitting 321 with 367 OBP and a fighter is it slugging and Camargo who uh, is playing in Lidon for six years since 2016 and all those years being with Aguilas and he's doing pretty well this season he's been uh, alongside the last season uh, he, those last two seasons has been their best uh, his best star in the league and um, also for Aglas in that game another guy who uh, did pretty well was Jairo Munoz who went 2 for 4 with 2 runs and 1 triple he's hitting 352 uh, right now um, but his batting average is still not qualified uh, for the lead because he didn't begin the season being a regular player um, yeah, basically the goods uh, pitching by, let's say, the starting pitcher because the relief was a mess. Uh, and the key hit by Ronnie Mauricio and also Pablo Reyes were the key for, let's say, winning that game. And in another game, let's talk about Escogido, who were playing Estrellas in Stadio de los Vargas Stadium and in that game Estrellas won a, the um, breaking a bad streak of three lost games and for Estrellas in this game it was Eduardo Olivares who hit a two RBI single and also Rainer Nunez, who got three hits in four at bats, who were the most outstanding players offensively for Estrellas. And also the pitching staff, who made a really good job. The only, the only pitcher who allowed the run was the starting pitcher, Jesse Diaz. And he only threw three innings, though. But the relievers did pretty well. Six scoreless innings of only two hits. Um, nine strikeouts um, again for Escogido they keep struggling offensively um, and they have got a couple of integration this last week I'm not talking about uh, Esteban Floreal the Yankees player also Otto Lopez who plays for the Blue Jays he went 2 for 3 in that game and um, Another guy he was a foreign player, Robert Nunstrom, who got a single and an RBI, the only run that Escogito got in that game. He made his debut uh, yesterday. And also Tanner Anderson, who was a uh, was the starting pitcher, he threw three scoreless innings, but still the offensive was pretty weak. They got seven hits and non extra bases. Extra bases hit. Um, yeah, that's been the story for Escogido. I like good starting pitching, bad hitting, and bad relief. 
um, yesterday was Pedro Strott, who allowed two runs, but they also made three errors. One for Otto Lopez, another one for Joseph Rosa, and also a throwing error by Pedro Strott. And let's see, let's talk about the other game was Toros against Gigantes, the Toros that have won three games in a row for the first time in this season. And that streak ended yesterday with Gigantes that has been pretty inconsistent with their offensive. But last night was huge by Carlos Peguero, he hit a grand slam, also Henry Rutia with a homer, three RBIs, and Tito Polo with two doubles and three RBIs. They were basically the responsible for the 10 runs in terms of RBIs. And they are, have been pretty great acquisitions, and pretty, pretty great foreign players. I'm talking about Rutia and Tito Polo, Rutia is uh, repeating this season with Gigantes in for Polo's first period in the Dominican Winter League and on the other side of the game Jorge Martinez threw a really good game uh, five innings uh, four hits only one run no walks and five strikeouts and now his ERA is 243 and it's his second win of the season. And Gigantes, who in the last week received uh, the integration of Jose City today, uh, yesterday he was, uh, he went 1 for 5 with one wrong score and he stole a base and he already has three stolen bases. And he has a really nice shot to won the storyline basis uh, lead in in the dome which is actually being leader by Eli de la Cruz with nine Eli de la Cruz was stopped by uh, the Cincinnati Reds the, the plan for him was only to uh, play just a month and last Friday was his last game and it was the same for Nate Pearson which is curious because in the beginning of uh, before the beginning of the season the general manager of Teresa Licey Auto uh, Vicente told that Pearson uh, have the permit to pitch the whole season in Lidon where something apparently changed and Pearson have a really nice season in Lidon, he didn't allow it wrong and more than 10 innings just striking out more than uh, one guy for an inning and he wasn't unstoppable in, in that matter. Also, fully say they are still expecting the debut for O'Neill Cruz, he's been in the roster, like in the regular roster knowing the daily roster for more than a week. He's been play, playing in the parallel league and getting ready, but still is like a mystery when he's going to make his debut. You may think that yesterday was like a pretty good scenario for him to make his debut. Thing was like, again, between Issei and Aguilas, the most the greatest rivalry in, in Lidon it was in the same home in Kiskeju Stadium so let's see what happens in that uh, aspect also for Toros I forgot to mention that Miguel Andujar made his debut uh, last Saturday and also Vidal Bruham and when you see that line not for Toros and uh, you, you may notice that it's been like quite the upgrade for them like having Vidal Bruham, Jesus Sanchez, 
Clint Frazier that is struggling in his first experience in the Dominican Winter League. He's hitting just 0 91. And for Frazier, he's half played six games already. And yeah, let's see what happened with him. And but also with a following with Toros, a Miguel Andujar, Brian De La Cruz, Emmanuel Valdez, who is a good prospect for the Red Sox, uh, Wendell Rijo, who is still leading or co leading the a home room department in Lidon with Michael Perez who it's been more than two weeks since he left to play in Puerto Rico um, yeah for Toros they're been playing way better especially in his pitching staff they are doing way better but also in their offensive you can notice that they are not scoring that much runs, but they are getting on base more often. And that was something that it wasn't happening before. And in this month of November, after it's been yeah, 20 days in this month, and Lisey and Aguilas has been the main two things in this months on the whole tournament basically but specifically in this month after Aguilas and Licey Toros been the a net best team in Lidon and since they changed the manager and added a couple of more guys that I already mentioned you and also a couple of additions in the pitching staff they are playing way better they are basically now in a qualifying spot they are in the fourth place right now and this is making the tournament more interest interesting because the beginning of the tournament in the first two weeks it was like only Lisey and Aguilas dominating with Gigantes and playing above average and then Estrella Storz and Escogido playing hopeful that is changing and let's see how the standing is after yesterday activity and Aguilas keep leading the standing with 22 wins and 9 losses and then our say only one game away and in the third place are Gigantes 14 and 15 or 7 games away from the first place then Toros in the 4th place with 12 and 17 9 games away from the first place 2 games away from the 3rd spot that are hurt by Gigantes right now and in the 5th place Estrellas with 11 and 18 1 game away from Toros and Escogido Nine gain and twenty losses been pretty awful for them, and they still have their chances to make it to the playoffs because, like the form of the tournament, allow like even a team in that position to dream about making it to the playoffs to the mini playoff that is basically. Uh, the best of three games series uh, and yes they have been playing really bad but still they still have 21 games less and let's see how it goes let's see the other integration they are getting from Mil Reyes is gonna make his debut uh, tonight game against Toros and Andy Romero was in the stadium last Saturday and I don't know if he's gonna play with Escogido this season he threw 
over like 114 innings with uh, Chivalote in, in the Japanese Baseball League and he was quite uh, a little bit injured also so let's see how that goes and finally let's talk about the leaders in the tournament I already was telling you about Steve Moyer uh, that was leading in ERA uh, Steven Moyer's but also let's go with the main uh, categories in batting average Henry Rutia is leading with 318 and Closter is Ronnie Mauricio with 316 Steven Moyers have four wins and he's leading that department in homers and there's a tie between Michael Perez and Wendell Rio and I already told you about the ERA with Steven Moyer leading with 0 93 also in RBI is, is Ronnie Mauricio the leader with 22 second Carlos Pereira with 18 Carlos Martinez is leading the strikeout department with 33 in second place is Humberto Mejia from Escogido with 29 in stolen bases Eli de la Cruz have had 9 and that is going to change soon because in the second place are Tito Polo and Kei Gora from Gigantes and Aguila respectively with 8 and in safe Richard Rodriguez have 9 and the second spot belongs to Jairo Asensio with seats. And today we gonna have three games beginning at 6 15 Eastern Time. Estrellas visiting Tigres in Kiskeye Stadium, then at 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time, Gigantes versus Aguilas, and at the same time, 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time. Leones face Toros in Francisco Micheli Stadium. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching on YouTube. And I'll see you in another episode. Have a good one.